from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 11 p.m. Tonight, the uproar over LA's homeless crisis, the mayor, and a plan to get them off the streets of Venice are hammered by homeowners. But supporters also came out in force to spell out why this could work. The showdown brought a lot of raw emotion to an already hot issue. And CBS 2's Rachel Kim is live in Venice tonight. Rachel. Yeah, Pat and Jeff, the town hall meeting wrapped up about an hour ago here at Westminster Elementary School. It was a packed house full of strong opinions on both sides. Emotions ran high at a town hall in Venice. Where residents didn't hold back their feelings about the city's proposal to get the homeless off the streets and into interim housing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, you do want to hear this information. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti, Councilman Mike Bonin, and LAPD Chief Michael Moore were there to listen and answer questions. Are you planning to do anything to stop? you know, the increase of homelessness, or is this just a welcome sign for the rest of the country? Many of these residents aren't happy about the bridge housing project proposed for the MTA lot in Venice. We are the only site out of all the ones that the city is looking at that's surrounded on four sides by residences. You don't put homeless shelters near elementary schools. Bridge housing is a big part of the city's homelessness strategy, providing interim housing and services for the homeless already living on the streets and sidewalks. Some residents feel this project is a step in the right direction. This has to work for everybody. Whether you're for it or against it, if it fails, our community fails. If you read about the project, there will be security, there will be people who take care, there are going to be social workers. The three city leaders pointed to the success and example of the housing shelter at El Pueblo in downtown L.A. We have to try things. We have to try this one. I think this one will be successful. We don't have any objection to bridge housing, but it's an experiment, and we don't believe that it should be at this location. Now, if the shelter ends up going up, it'll be gone after three years. Reporting live tonight in Venice, Rachel Kim, CBS 2 News. All right, Rachel, thank you. Tonight, family members are very worried about an elderly Palmdale couple missing since yesterday morning. Keith and Pauline Davis are both dealing with serious health problems. They need medication. CBS 2's Greg Mills talked to their very worried daughter tonight. That couple lives here with their grandson. Now, the grandson was the last person to see them when he left for work around 5 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. They're my mom and dad. They're her grandparents. Lori Clark and her niece, Bonnie Davis, spent the day driving around Lancaster, Quartz Hill, and Palmdale. We went to everywhere, the local grocery store, the, her doctor's offices. Her parents, 87-year-old Keith Davis, who has had Alzheimer's for 15 years. His mind isn't there anymore. And her mom, 91-year-old Pauline Davis, who can't hear well and can't see well. She can't see the streetlights anymore to tell if dad's in the wrong place anymore because she's almost blind. Keith and Pauline Davis, married for 63 years. They've lived in this house more than 50 years. They apparently drove away in their car, this 2011 maroon Ford Fusion, sometime Wednesday and haven't been seen since. He's done it before. Always came back, but not this time. Lori Clark is worried about her mom's heart condition. She has to take medication every day, but that medication is still at the house. It's on the counter, and she ha it's in the seven-day planner. And nobody knows where they went, where they are the second night away from home. Their only daughter's biggest concern? That they're hurt, and no one to help them. She said one of her dad's very favorite places, Bouquet Canyon Falls, she wonders if they might have gone there, and she hopes the sheriff's department is checking. In Palmdale, Greg Mills, CBS 2 News. A dangerous murder suspect live streams a police chase in Morongo Valley that turned into a deputy involved shooting. <laughs> now, this video was posted to suspect Roger Tyndall's Facebook page. Police say he stole the silver BMW he was in was armed and had a woman in the car. An FBI task force reports Tyndall was also wanted for double murder in Nevada. Officers say after Tyndall opened fire, deputies shot back. The 36-year-old was hit and is expected to be okay. 
Steve Penny, the former president of USA Gymnastics, was arrested tonight in Tennessee. Now, this comes three weeks after he was indicted on felony charges connected to the Larry Nasser molestation scandal. Penny was arrested in Gatlinburg. He was indicted by Texas on charges he tampered with evidence. According to the indictment, Penny ordered the removal of documents from the Carroll Ranch, where some athletes say they were molested by Nasser. The longtime team doctor was sentenced in February after he pleaded guilty to molesting 10 girls. A beloved Redlands crossing guard killed in a hit and run was remembered tonight with a vigil. Students and parents honored Leonard Bam Bam Ortiz by doing his wild wave and big smile at the corner where he kept children safe. I remember him as a joyful guy. When I heard about this, uh, it broke my heart, you know, and that's why I came here today. Felt like you were part of his family just by passing him <clears> every morning. Investigators have released new security video of what may be the SUV that hit Ortiz. They believe it was silver or gray, possibly a Toyota Sequoia. All right, now to the campaign 2018. Mm -hmm. A debate in a U.S. Senate race that really wasn't even classified as a debate. No incumbent, Dianne Feinstein faced off against State Senator Kevin DeLeon and CBS2 political reporter Dave Ryan has yeah. all the highlights or play-by-play. -play. Well, yeah, and I'm, I'm not suggesting this will make the uh, political debate Hall of Fame, okay? <laughs> but there, were, there, no, there was plenty no. of substance. Senator <laughs> Dianne Feinstein made her pitch to mainstream moderate Democrats as the senator who, after more than two decades in Washington, knows how to get things done, while State Senator Kevin DeLeon presented himself as the progressive, change-oriented Democrat who's ready to take on President Trump and shake up Washington with a fresh agenda. In the first and only debate of the 2018 California U.S. Senate race, which, by the way, was called a conversation, not a debate, the candidates, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein and her Democratic opponent, State Senator Kevin DeLeon, agreed on one thing that the Trump administration is battling California on almost every significant issue. I wish Democrats in Washington would fight like hell for dreamers, just the way Donald J. Trump and the Republicans fight like hell for their stupid wall. Feinstein responded by pointing out that it takes more than rallies and strong words to change what's going on in Washington when the other party controls everything. It's like hitting your head against a concrete wall. You can march, you can... Uh, filibuster, you can talk all night. It doesn't change anything. What changes things are elections. Asked about their agenda for the coming years, Senator Feinstein said immigration reform is high on her list. One of the things that we are writing now is a comprehensive immigration reform bill. It's been a very long time since immigration policies of this nation have been looked at and reformed. De Leon also cited immigration reform and universal health care, as well as action to address climate change and clean energy. And he stayed on message. It's time for change, to not just be on the sidelines, but on the front lines. Now, with only 20 days to go now before the November 6th election, the polls show Senator Feinstein still holding on to an 11-point lead. She also has millions of campaign dollars left to spend on TV ads, while the De Leon campaign was only in the $300,000 zone on the most recent report. And with no more debates scheduled, it will be difficult for him to close the gap now. Jeff, back to you. All right. You may soon get an alert before the next big one hits. Hope so. We'll show you an early warning system that is ready to go. Please don't Tense moments as a Newport Beach surgeon and his girlfriend accused of drugging and raping women face new serious charges. Pull over now! Ah, uh, she's not having it. Wait until you see what this mom did when she caught her son joyriding in her BMW. Also this. A new call for a massive recall tonight. Two on your side talks <laughs> to two drivers who saw their cars go up in flames. <laughs> There it is, the boys in blue win game five, and they head to Milwaukee for a final face-off against the Brewers. Can they get it done? Hey, everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. We are tracking once again some fire weather coming our way. We'll give it to you all coming up. And here's a look at the guests tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert.